Hello, in this short video, I will walk you through the basics of Google's Colab so you can be coding in just a few minutes. And if you find this video helpful, please do subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and hit the bell icon. Okay, so first things first, what is Google's Colab? Well, Colab is short for Co Laboratory because it's an environment to test and write code, as well as have multiple people collaborate on the Colab files. And you can think of Google Colab as an online web interface. In other words, it's a website that lets you write, run, and share code all within the Google Cloud. And since it's a website, then you can do it all just from your browser. So there's no need to install or set up anything because it all runs on the Google Cloud. In particular, these Colab documents are called notebooks. And they are based on the open source project of Jupyter Notebook, which is basically a web-based interactive computing platform. And these notebooks are made up of cells, which combine live code, equations, narrative text, and visualizations like graphs and images. Now to use Colab, you will need three things, an internet connection, a Google account, and log into the Colab website using that Google account. All right, so let's open up the Colab website. And if you don't have the website already bookmarked to access Colab, you can simply do an online search for the word Colab, and most likely the first result will be the Google Colab. Click on it. This will take you to the Colab interface, and the first step is to either load an existing notebook from these locations, or to open a new notebook. In the Examples tab, you can find a long list of notebooks that cover a broad list of helpful topics. Then we have the Recent tab, which will display recent files you have worked on. We can also open notebooks that are saved in our Google Drive. You can also open files from the GitHub repository. And finally, you can open up notebooks from your own computer by browsing to the right location. So let's go ahead and open a new notebook and explore the interface of a blank notebook. At the top here is the name of your notebook and you can edit the name by clicking on it. And the file extension of these Google Colab notebooks is IPyNB, which stands for IPython Notebook. Actually, the IPython Notebook is now known as the Jupyter Notebook which, like I said earlier, it's an interactive computational environment in which you can combine code execution, rich text, math, plots, and rich media. And right under the name, we have our different menus, and I'll show you a few of them in a moment. Then right under the name, we have the option to add either a code cell or a text cell. And by default, a new notebook opens up with a blank code cell where you can start typing your Python code. So let's type a simple hello world statement. And to run this statement, you can click on this run icon. But before I do, look at this connect word. Because Colab is built on Google's cloud resources, we need to connect to that environment and be assigned certain resources like memory and hard disk space. So let's run this code and see what happens to the connect word up here. For the code to run, Google had to allocate, connect, and initialize some resources for me on the Google Cloud. And so we can see that now I have some memory and disk space that was allocated for me and initialized. And if I hover my mouse over this area, we can see that I'm now connected to the Python 3 Google Computer Engine backend, and we also see the details of the allocated memory and disk space. And since I ran my code, the results are displayed run under my code. If you want to clear this output, you can hover your mouse over the output icon, and it changes to an X, so when clicked, it clears the output. You can also clear the output by going to the Edit menu, then the Clear Output option is here. For any cell, either a code cell or a text cell, we have some controls on the far right. For example, you can move the cells up or down. You can add a comment about the cell. Or you can delete the cell. 
You can also save your changes that you just made by going to File, then Save. But you might have already have noticed that Google saves our changes automatically every few seconds to our Google Drive. So you can always have it accessible to you. Now to add more cells, you can click on either one of these buttons, depending on the type of cells you want to add. Or another way to add cells is to hover over the top or bottom of an existing cell, which will then display the Add Cell option. Now that I have two code cells, I can run them individually. Or you can also go to the Runtime menu, then click Run All, and this will run all the cells in sequential order. I'll share with you more about code cells, but for now, let's switch gear and I'll talk about text cells. All right, so let's go ahead and add a text cell. And as you can see, text cells are divided up in two views, separated by this vertical dotted line. The left view contains the text you actually type, and the right view is the preview of what it will look like. For example, let's type, this is my first notebook. You can see the preview on the right side, and I can format this text also. For example, this is the heading toggle, and if I click on it once, it formats my text to one heading and I see the preview on the right. If I click on it again, it toggles to another heading format. And if I click on it again, I get a third header. And one last click, it takes me back to no header at all. I can also bold my text. I can change it to italics. I can also do other things in a text cell like inserting a link, add an image, add numbered list or bullet list, and other options. Now when you're done with editing your text cell, you can either click on this icon to close the markdown editor, or you can click on another cell. And to edit the text cell again, you'll need to double click on it, and then I'll click away. Now part of the Google Colab interface is this left pane here with different icons that can be expanded and collapsed. First up, we have the table of contents, which allows us to organize our notebooks in sections. Next, we have the find and replace, which allows us to search our notebook and replace anything if needed, just like in any text editor. Next, we have the code snippets, which is a great tool to find uh, examples of code for common tasks. After that, we have files, which gives you access to your folders and files, including files in your Google Drive. So I currently don't see my Google Drive, which should be under the content folder. To connect to my Google Drive, I need to mount the drive, and I do this by clicking on this icon up here. I need to give permission to this notebook to access my Google Drive. And you can see down here that it's mounting the drive. And now I see my drive here. Then down here we have the command palette, which is a shortcut interface that allows us to run common commands. So if I click on clear output, it will do just that. All right, now we talked about how Colab saves your work to the Google Drive automatically, but we also have the option to download the notebook to our local computer. We simply go to the File menu, then down here is the Download option, and you can download it as an IPy NB file or as a Python file. If in the future you want to use this file in a Jupyter notebook type environment like Google's Colab, then download your file as an IPy NB. Okay, I had promised earlier that I was going to show you some more code examples other than the Hello World example. So let me open up another IPython notebook that I previously prepared for this video.
This notebook starts out with a text cell to display a couple of headers. Then we have another text cell that explains what the code will do. Uh, in Python, it's very common to work with files like text files or log files to extract specific data out of these files. So I wrote a simple Python code that uses regular expression to find data in a text file called mbox.txt. And I already uploaded that file to my Google Drive. So here we can see two code cells. The first code cell mounts my Google Drive. And the second code cell prompts users to enter a regular expression. And then searches the mbox.txt file and returns an output line which displays the count of how many times there was a match. I chose this particular example because it shows how we can write any kind of Python code and run it quickly in Colab. So let's run the first code cell. Since the notebook needs permission to access my Google Drive, I have to first allow its permission. Choose my Google account. Scroll down and click Allow. And now let me run the second code cell. I'm prompted to enter some sort of a regular expression because this is what's written in my Python code. So I'll type caret then author, which simply means to find any lines in the text file that starts with the word author. And since uh, Python and regular expressions are case sensitive, it will only find the word author with a capital A. So I'll hit enter on my keyboard and I get the output right here. If I run it again, this time I'll search for any lines that end with the word Java. So I entered Java followed by the dollar sign, which is a regular expression pattern to match the end of line. I hit enter. And again, I get the results of the number of counts that match this regular expression. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to this channel, give this video a like, and please click the notification bell so you can know when future videos are published. Thank you for watching, and bye for now until our next video.